So for those of you joining us on our live stream today, we had our, our Christmas dinner here last night because it was the last evening together. The uh, young people here will head home now for their Christmas holidays today, more or less. And uh, so we had our wee Christmas celebration last night. And what was just so wonderful, uh, as I've had this experience on numerous occasions here, uh, is that we're able to have so much fun with without all of the things that the world says we need to do in order to have fun. So, like, I think at most people had one glass of wine, so there, was, there wasn't even much, much wine involved at all. Maybe two bottles for the whole nine, 20, 30 of us, two bottles for 30 of us, which is about a thimbleful each kind of thing. And, um, and yet, after the meal then, which was a cracker of a meal, by the way, uh, and uh, after the meal then we're just singing songs and telling stories and just all just good wholesome fun, actually it was picturesque, gathered around a wonderfully decorated, beautifully lit tree and a lit stove and uh, just everyone looking, looking, looking fab with all of their rig outs and the lads even washed and you know it was just and it was just, it was just what, what, what just struck me was how when we do what God wants everything is better, right? When we do what God wants, when we're trying to do God's will, everything is better. It's, it's just, and it's so typically, dare I say, diabolical, uh, to be tempted to thinking, if we do what God wants, our life is less fulfilling, less exciting, more boring, more full of penance and shame and rules. It's just rubbish. Like, that's just absolute diabolical rubbish. Like, following the Lord, it makes our lives, it means you can actually live a life with no shame and no embarrassment. And no, oh my goodness, what did I do yesterday? And oh, what did I do last night? And what happened? And, and oh, I feel so bad. And oh, my, with all the regrets I have. We don't have that. Following what the Lord wants, we don't have that. Uh, we don't have this litany of self-accusation. And keep in mind, it's, self, it's not the church accusing us of anything. We don't have all this self-accusation of all these stupid things I've done and said. And now look at the mess I've made in my life, but this is it. Now this is what we have to do. This is what I'm stuck with. So, you know, we just don't have that. So everything, everything, it's like, it's like, tutto è più saporito. Everything, everything tastes better, they'd say in Italian. Everything just has a, uh, yeah, everything just, just has a whole different flavor. It's like, I don't know if we can... Forgive me if, if this isn't theologically correct, but it's like, it's like our faith is like salt that goes on everything, except ice cream. But it's salt that just, just goes on, on a meal. It makes, it makes, everything, makes everything taste better. You know, everything. So when we read today, uh, then, in our gospel, just the one word, word that really struck me today was, um, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. And again, God is with us, not just in the occasions where we've no other choice. You know, when someone is gravely ill, or when there's been a car accident, or when there's some tragedy, uh, some tsunami somewhere, and then we start you know, maybe praying or whatever. God is with us absolutely in, in, in those moments. He's also with us in the joys, and we shouldn't forget that either. He's with us in the joys. Like, I mean, if, if the Lord had walked in last night in the middle of our... Uh, end of 2020 party, we, would, we wouldn't have had to hide anything or change anything. You know what I mean? You know, like when, you, when your mom walks in, you're watching a movie, you go, June, you would like, put, what, snap forward, that scene, pause, back to Emmerdale, or if, 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 maybe even the Emmerdale is scandalous these days, I don't know, back to CBBBs, like, and, <laughs> I don't know. Um, Whereas if the Lord had walked in last night, we wouldn't have had to change anything. We could have stayed dressed the way we were. We could have been eating and drinking the way we were. We could have been telling stories. And we wouldn't have had to change a single thing if Jesus himself had appeared to us. Well, we probably would have maybe put down the guitars and knelt. But, I mean, what if the Lord had, had walked in, we don't have to hide anything. Do you know, it's just, it's just wholesome joy, wholesome fun. And this is this, the Lord, when, the, when we have the Lord, like when we live with the Lord. Uh, and this was, we've had this, I remember, uh, I might have told this story before, but uh, two friends of mine, they decided one summer that um, they would go a bit mad and um, that they would go to Magaluf, you know, and have, go to this like party island. It's like the way, you know, Ibiza and Magaluf, these kind of places, the way they're, they're advertised, it's like, you know, it'll be the best 
week of your life. It's like a non-stop party, club, pub, and entertainment. Uh, so just all this, is just, it's absolutely, it just looks, looks amazing. And then all of the pictures you have, all, you see everywhere, it's like all under 25 year olds with all of their pouts and things and all going on. And it's just all just style and okay. Beach life. Um, Grant, so there's a, they, they had a choice then because uh, we were going to Medjugorje, uh, or the group that we were part of. So they had a choice between Magaluf and Medjugorje and they went, Magaluf, because it's fun. It's fun. So they went out, they flew out, and it was, whatever it was, 34 degrees, absolutely baking for their pasty Irish skin. And uh, so they, they get into the hotel, says, Jeannie, it's hot, it's roasting, roasting. Okay, I know it's only one o'clock in the afternoon, but I'm going to have a pint. So they had four pints each, and then they're, oh, Jeannie, I think I need to lie down. So then they, they went for a rest, and... Uh, then they got up to go to one of the nightclubs because the nightclub was open at like midnight. Uh, so they went to one of the nightclubs, but we in Ireland were not used to going out to a club until six in the morning. We just were not able to pace ourselves for that. Like we get absolutely wrecked by three o'clock in the morning. That's just, I was just, so come about four o'clock, they're like, okay, I just don't think I can do it anymore. So they went back to the hotel in the following morning. I think I might just sleep into lunch. So they slept into lunch and then they woke up, oh, Jenny, just roasting. It's like three or four o'clock in the afternoon, like when it's just baking hot. So I'm going to the pool, no, it's too hot. I'm back to the room. And, then, and by two or three nights in, they were like, yeah, I don't think we'll go out tonight. You know, it was like the, the, the fun, like the, 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 the novelty had already worn off within two or three days. I remember when I went to, to university as well, for many of us who went to university in, in our first year, it's your first time living away from Mammy. So she doesn't know what time you come home, if you come home at all. So like the first year then people go kind of fairly, fairly mad. But I remember then by the, even by the time we had hit, definitely by the time we had hit second, second year. It's like, oh, Jenny, do we have to, do we have to go out again? Like, I suppose, nothing else to do. Like, and the novelty had just was well worn off, well worn off. But that's, it's kind of what you do, there's nothing else to do. But it's, it's, not, it's not even fun anymore, but it's just, it's just what you do. It's just like living a life with the Lord, it works. It works. It's, it's far more fun and far more rewarding. When those two friends of mine came home from Magaluf, having had the experience of that after a week of baking, baking in bed, I think was what they did basically, they said, well, if there's ever a choice again between Magaluf and Medjugorje, Medjugorje every time. Because like the, the, just the good, clean, fun that we have out there, all with the Lord, God with us, Emmanuel. And why is this important? Well, it's important it's because what do we think we're here for? What are we here for on earth? Just for entertainment. We're here on earth to choose heaven. And if God isn't enough for me here, he's not going to be enough for me for all eternity. So that's what we're here for. Do you want me? Do you want God? Do we want him in our lives or not? Because if we don't want him here, we won't want him for all eternity. And that's, that's pretty serious. If our lives revolve, we can have entertainment, but if our lives revolve around entertainment, then we will simply never be happy. So we ask the Lord now, in the season of Advent and preparation for Christmas, that we might rediscover the fulfillment of following the Lord not just in entrusting to him the, the serious things that we can't fix, but in a daily life with him, living all of our experiences with him, sharing all of our hopes, our dreams, our joys, our crosses with our Lord and Saviour, Emmanuel, God, with us. Amen.